Hey, Mark Warnke here. Uh, they call me the goat guy. Um, but I have a large, large ranch for if anybody who doesn't already know who I am. We have a big homestead, creeks and pastures and horses and goats and chickens. And, and we're trying to do the off-grid thing and develop this property and do all that stuff. And I've been doing this stuff for a lot of years and this is a new property and we're setting it up. One of the things this property has a lot of is ticks. So one of the birds that we've chosen to bring into our farm is guinea fowl. Now, I've been around guinea fowl before and they were super, super loud and they are a pain and they're really hard to like contain and domesticate and support. And honestly, I think this is gonna be a failed mission, um, but we're gonna go about it in a way that is gonna teach us the lessons towards doing the same strategy, I believe, with meat chickens. And if I were to restart this over again and Trisha hadn't have been so scared of, of ticks and I would have thought about it, I would have just done this same strategy with meat chickens because the main reason to have uh, birds that are eating ticks is to do, do it in the spring and the early summer and then you can butcher. But guinea fowl are not a very good butcher bird. They're just a super aggressive predatory bird that's crazy loud and annoying. These things stink and I want them out of my baby barn. And so we're trying to get them in an outdoor pen. So we're gonna put them in the juveniles. And basically I did my strategy to be able to meld well to a meat chicken strategy in the future. Cause I think I, there's no way I'm feeding and trying to keep these guys warm all winter when there's three feet of snow, I ain't doing it. So. This is how we've contained them. We did a good job rearing them. You can see, by the way, look at this, the difference, which is crazy, between a laying hen that's the same age and a guinea fowl. Now that laying hen's gonna end up finishing larger and the guinea fowl's gonna be smaller overall in size, but look how much faster they grow. And what our goal was, was to use laying hens to teach the guinea fowl to go into their pen at night and to have kind of a maintainable system. So I'm gonna go out there and show you what we're doing now. Um, and again, you can adopt this for a meat strategy, I believe, because I'm building it for both. Now, uh, Shea, my video lady um, and extraordinaire, uh, who is so helpful and I'm so grateful to her, um, let me know, which anybody on my staff knows, I get a lot of guff from the uh, what I would call impractical folks that think that things don't die for you to live, whether you're a vegetarian or a meat eater. I happen to be a meat eater and things have to die for me to live. And so does everything else. And that's very natural and beautiful. And I celebrate that here. And so if you're gonna have a problem with me taking an animal like a guinea fowl that I've raised and then killing it and then eating it, then you're just on the wrong channel and I don't know how to help you. I do acknowledge that I find your perspective interesting and I am curious about what makes you think that way. So I'm not running you down, but at the same time, if you wanna run me down, you're just at the wrong place and I'm not gonna listen. So it is what it is. So. Here is our guinea fowl slash meat chicken transition pen because I did not want to commit a whole bunch of time, money, and energy to building an elaborate, really nice looking pen based on an experiment um, because money doesn't grow on trees. And so I was able with some scrap lumber to create a containment space that will allow them to roost, be fed, supported, and kept warm through the rest of their turning into non-chicks mode and they have three roosting platforms it's almost 20 birds so they need a fair amount of roosting we'll put a roof over the top of this and then my eventual goal is to train these guys through food and the use of the hens because the hens will want to come back here and if i teach them successively how to do it I'm actually going to take them and I'm going to have them learn how to come out of this. And then we're going to have them learn how to come out of this on like a plank that takes them to the outside of the pen and then lets these birds go out and forage all that side of the farm during the day. And because my laying hens are taking care of the inside of this pen and my livestock guardian dog is in the inside of this pen. So I need to teach these guys to slowly venture out into the other parts of the ranch and then come back to their pen every night where my livestock guardian dog can protect them. So that's kind of our plan. So there you go. Hope you find that helpful. Mark Warkey, the goat guy, signing out.